back in England, we got back in at 11 o'clock last night. It's now 9 a.m. Our flight was delayed, I think, 11 and a half hours. Sorry, just hold that. 11 and a half hours because our connecting flights messed up and Qatar were, I don't know, delayed on one of the flights. So we got into Doha Airport in Qatar and they said, yeah, the, the flight was late that we were on by an hour and that meant that we missed our connecting flight and that meant that the next available flight was 11 and a half hours away. So we had to get a taxi to a hotel, all provided by Qatar Airlines, uh, sleep in the hotel for about four hours and then go back to Qatar Airport. And it turned out that our journey was, I think instead of being 30 hours door to door, it was 47 hours of travel door to door from Bali back to the UK. Brutal. Got back 10 degrees in England, which funnily enough was exactly the same temperature as when we left two and a half months ago. I was shivering. Delighted to say though, it's 17 degrees now. It actually feels quite pleasant. And, God, I've forgotten where I parked the Fiat. And it's, it feels lovely to be back. Yes, it may be cold and gray. I mean, what else? Would I expect but it feels so nice to be back I'm delighted first things first I forgot to take the battery out of the Fiat or at least disconnect it so I'll see if that starts up then I'm going to try and start up the Bonneville and then I'll take you on a ride into town into Ipswich get a coffee I cannot tell you how good it feels to be back it's fantastic you know it's a problem when you live in in an apartment with just one parking space you just have to leave your car Oh, that feels weak. I've just tried it on the side of the road. I've got a feeling I'll have to buy a new battery here. I'll deserve this if it won't start because the night before heading off to Bali, I thought, shall I run out and disconnect the Fiat battery? And then I thought, no, I can't be bothered. I'll go to sleep instead. Mm -mm. Yep, yeah, what did I expect? Dead. Okay, let's try the Bonneville. Before I go and try the Bonneville, let me show you two bits from Quadlock. Brand new products here. This is the Quadlock Mag Wallet and the Quadlock Tripod. This, the Mag Wallet, I've been using non-stop now for the past two weeks. It is a little wallet that attaches, so my cards will go in there, attaches with the Mag adapter on the back and it's brilliant. It just attaches to the back of your quad lock case on your phone magnetically. And it means that you no longer have to carry around a wallet separately. It's brilliant. And then you just pull it off because it's, it's just magnetized. So when you attach it to the car or your motorbike, clip it on like that, put that in your pocket as a normal wallet. And then when you're out and about, just clip it on as one. It is fantastic. I absolutely love that. And then this is a selfie stick from Quadlock. So I use this for podcasts and self-filming. It folds up completely compactly like that. Pull up the top bit, open up the legs. Beautiful quality that may not come out on camera, but the quality is lovely. And then you just clip on your phone. Of course, take off the wallet. I use Quadlock for... I use Quadlock for everything. I use my phone, iPhone, with the Quadlock attachments for all of my filming. It is fantastic. You can also use it as a selfie stick. So there you go. Two brand new products from Quadlock. Always innovating. They've also got, let me just show you one more thing that I don't have yet. But instead of a wallet, I think they're coming out with a battery attachment as well. So you can have extra life on your battery as well as an external battery. But for now, I've got rid of my wallet. Genuinely, I have. That's all I use.
Now, I was more sensible with the Bonneville and I disconnected one of the terminals. I think it's fine, it doesn't need any charge at all, but I just gave it two hours charge because I've got a motorbike battery charger. I just don't have one for a car. What is it, red first, positive first? I never remember, never mind, we'll just do positive. So I think this should be fine. But what's the price of laziness? Probably about 120 pounds for that extra 10 minutes sleep for me. That's quite annoying. I've always had problems with the battery on the Bonnevilles. I find that all Triumphs built from about the year 2004 up to maybe 2015 have the most atrocious battery issues. I found that with two of my Triumphs and my friends have also found that. And if you have a Triumph alarm, Triumph factory alarm, from that period, let's say early 2000s to about 2015 or so, it will destroy your battery. The amount of issues myself and my friends have had with Triumph factory alarms has been atrocious. Okay, here we go. I'm hoping though, as about a six month old battery, this will be fine. Lights. Choke. Oh, it feels great. After seeing the, the T120 Bonneville on the beach in Bali the day before we left, I've been so excited to ride this. So I'll just give it a quick wipe down, head off into Ipswich. I've got some stuff to pick up and we'll grab a coffee. I love it, feels great to have it back. talk about this in my podcast quite often when you go out and you test a bike that's obviously better than your own does it make you want to go out and buy that bike but for me when you've had a bike for a while it turns into kind of a family member and you know it's not the best bike but that doesn't matter that's that's not what matters at all it's like a family member you just love it and it's exactly the same with this Bonneville. I know now there are plenty of much, much better bikes, but I've built a strange attachment to this one. It's almost, it's borderline pathetic, but I just don't know if I could ever get rid of it. I just love it so, so much. Every time I come back, it's probably like a feeling a pet owner gets when they see their dog for the first time after a holiday or something. I get that exact same feeling from the Bonneville. What's the first thing you said when you jumped on the Bonneville? Oh, it's so comfortable. 
I forgot how comfortable it was. Yeah. It's almost ridiculous how comfortable it feels. And I had, I mean, the scooters are comfortable, but to have a comfortable front and passenger seat, oh, it feels so nice to be back on it. We can't decide what to actually wear. I've now changed my outfit twice. Monica's come out like she's dressed for an Arctic <laughs> exploration. I'm some kind of strange summer gear mix. Yeah, very and strange. I could have kept changing my outfit yeah. because it keeps going from quite warm to freezing to pouring with rain and then stopping. No, it's okay, it's not too cold. It's 17 degrees. Yeah. But it feels good to be back. No? It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. I just want to try and figure no, out don't leave them here. No, I think if we hide them like this, no one will know. That's the problem with open face helmets. Can't okay. lock them easily. I but think I'll, I'll do you want to carry us? Monica, I'll buy you a new one if this gets lost, I promise you. Because the amount of hassle that will be saved will be worth it. I promise you, this will be fine. It's Ipswich. Yeah, it's Ipswich. <laughs> no, that, no, Ipswich is safe enough compared to southeast London. Is that comparing it nicely? Okay, no, no, this will be fine. This will be fine. Okay, that's on you. If that gets stolen, you have to get me a new one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, two new helmets if it gets stolen. It'll be fine. I just hate carrying helmets. We never use this lock. Why did you oh, break yeah, it? Oh, yeah, the lock. See, this is why I need to put the panniers on, uh, the rear rack on, so I can lock this or hold this properly. Well, can you lock my helmet somehow? No, because it's open face. I can't lock open face helmets. Good, let's go. Let's go. We're property hunting. We got back yesterday and already it's begun. We've arranged one viewing for Wednesday next week. We're looking at Ipswich or Bury St Edmunds, and that up there, Mm -hmm. Somewhere there is one of the properties that we've booked in a viewing for. Yeah. The problem is that the UK rental market is ridiculously brutal at the moment. Mm -hmm. we, we can probably go and see that on Wednesday, the soonest viewing, and there'll be five other people putting in asking price offers at the exact amount. And then it's either going to be a case of upping the price that you offer or just hope that the owner or the estate agent prefers you over someone else. So. It's going to be interesting. I'm expecting a tough ride though here <laughs> to get a property in the UK and you never know, depending on how difficult it is, we'll probably be heading off to Tenerife for getting yeah. or something like that. But that's our first aim, mm -hmm. one of these ones, right on the marina. Or Bury St. Edmunds. Or Bury, so we need to go and have a look at either. But somewhere overlooking the water would just be amazing in Ipswich. But Monica's favourite is probably Bury. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It just, it's a bit more expensive. Yeah, it is noticeably more expensive. Yeah. But either one I'd be happy with. Fingers crossed within a month, I hope we'll get somewhere. sent to you and then just need you to fit them. I was trying, trying to get rid of it by the end of May, doing two for one here. Towards the end of May? Ah, bugger. Okay, I need them sooner. Is That's the very soonest you could possibly do it. Yeah. Swamped. Wow. No, I didn't. No. Are you enjoying it though? Okay, uh, thank you so much anyway, really appreciate it. Cheers, bye-bye. This is crazy. This is the problem we had in the summer where, I, I mentioned it in a video, basically there's such a chronic shortage of skilled people in the UK now, such a chronic shortage in all areas, that there aren't enough people to service the general population. I remember in the summer I went to try and get my bike fixed, something on it, 
and I was getting quoted waiting times of four months from the time I asked for my bike to be repaired to the time that it could be repaired. Four months. And I went to numerous different places and everyone around the UK said exactly the same. Uh, and it's not the motorbike mechanic's fault at all. It's just the state of, of the way it is right now. So I called up the mechanic, asked for my tyres to be changed. I can provide the tyres from Michelin and uh, all they need to do is change them. 29th I think I said 29th of May that is one month and one day away it's about 32 days away so in the UK if you don't work on your bike yourself if you can't fix your bike yourself and I'm not saying this as an experienced person that I can but if you can't do the basic stuff in the UK you will miss the entire biking season every time there's even the slightest thing wrong with your bike something has to change here quickly because to have a month wait to just have some tyres fitted. Can you do it yourself? No, you can't do tyres yourself unless you've got a, a special machine. Okay. It's, it's the one thing you really can't do yourself. Okay. That's the problem with it. So what are you going to do? Uh, I don't know. I have to just call around a few more places and hope someone can fit some tyres. I mean, it sounds like the most basic thing. Mm -hmm. But I've got a horrible feeling I won't be able to find anywhere. Hello, could I book my bike in to have its tyres changed, please? As soon as possible. When are you free? Uh, yeah, I, I'll get them from Michelin and they'll be delivered to you if that's okay. Uh, I'm hoping within the next two or three days. Would you have time potentially next week? Perfect. So if I get them booked in or get them sent over to you, could you just let me know when they arrive, then I'll drop the bike off. Triumph Bonneville. Freddie Dobbs. <laughs> oh, yes, he was fine. It's so funny, isn't it, how some mechanics can have a one month wait and some, yeah, of course, bring it down. Mm -hmm. I think this may be the same place I went to last time, actually. And they're, they're extremely good Kingdom Motorcycles. They got 4.9 out of 5 stars. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm getting Michelin to send tyres over to them. Uh, they will then immediately call me when it's ready because I need these tyres on. I'm going to have, I plan nothing, but there should be about a 5,000 mile road trip coming mm -hmm. up in about 10 days. And uh, even though my tyres could last a bit longer, maybe in 3,000 miles I'd need them, so it's best to get them changed. So that feels amazing. One thing I can't do, change tyres. Done. That restaurant, Ipswich Marina Grazing Sheep, is incredible. I highly recommend it. Come to Ipswich for the day, grab a bite to eat there. It's superb. Right, we'll wrap it up there. I'll, I'll take you along because it's literally 10 to 11 days time. I, I will be heading off to Africa on the Bonneville. I'll get into a bit more detail of that in the next vlog, I think, because I need to make sure the Bonneville is at least at an acceptable level. Feels amazing to be back. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming along on our first video back in Ipswich. Please do give the video a like, subscribe to the channel. See you all in the next one.